saltwater marshes of the flooded lands have gotten feet deeper with the melting of the recent snows. Spring has just barely begun in the Ironlands, and though the wind still carries the winter chill, all the melt comes down into the southern crest of these lands. And yet it's with a thaw that things can become just as dangerous as a biting winter can. That things that otherwise would remain beneath the deep frost begin to move. And though the Ironlanders have made migration as troops in hopes that with the thawing snows they can gain advantage against their enemies, the red tide that had come to their shores, it is with the thaw that the red tide also finds advantage. As now more body fodder can be dredged up from the depths of the muck and placed to lie in waiting for when their victims come upon them. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome after a very, very long break back to Unbound Lands, our solo Iron Sworn uh, actual play. Um, if you don't know what it is, I don't blame you, it's been a while. Uh, Iron Sworn is a tabletop RPG made by Sean Tomkin. You can find it for free on the website at ironsworn.rpg.com. Um, no affiliation, no sponsorship, nothing done in relation to this actual play. It's just, I enjoy the game. I like to do it. We're on it like episode 28 or something, session 28, something like that. So just to show you, I enjoy this game. Um, audio currently is being played off of tabletop audio and all of the game running for uh my sessions have been through foundry vtt so just to be transparent on what i am using um otherwise um my name is natalie i am our player and storyteller because this is a jamless solo game uh that i am running now iron sworn itself can be jamless group with gm solo not solo whatever you like. So if you do, if this does peak your address, check it out. Um, otherwise, if you like me in any capacity as I try so hard and work so hard, um, feel free to check about the about section down below here on Twitch. Or if you find this video on the VODs on YouTube, um, check the about section also description below. Um, Lots of ways to support me there. Find me wherever you can find me. Uh, mostly it's either Ghost Candle or Ghostly Candle. Um, that's about it. We got quite the recap, though, since it's been so long. Uh, so let us play our little title movie and we'll dive on in. Right. A little bit of lag with camera, but that's okay. We'll have to learn to deal with it. Um, since last we left off, realizing none of my stuff wants to be... I was late starting because of shenanigans. And it seems shenanigans are still happening with my setup here. So I'll just try my best. Let's ignore what I'm doing on the screen as I talk. So Eldred Unth daughter 
a iron-born individual of the Iron Lands. Had been put forth onto an adventure uh, in which she had to make a vow for. She had come across initially two raiders uh, of the Red Tide, or the Crimson Tide, I called them Red Tide, they're the Crimson Tide, um, which Eldred did not know at the time. And they managed to fight them off, though got maimed in the process. And since that day forth, she has been traveling far from home, fulfilling various vows um, as part of her call to honor under the banners um, that rally together to go against this new enemy um, that's come to the shores. And through her journeys, she had discovered that this enemy has been utilizing a type of necromantic magic to control the dead that's found within these lands. Now, the dead itself is very dangerous, but deads, undeads that are controlled is another matter entirely. It spent the winter preparing and training until a point where Eldred was asked to go on a venture to meet with the Tangled Wild Elves. She got separated from her party, her entourage, as they did get to the woods, um, but she ended up being found by one elf that she would eventually make a bond with and fulfill the task to the village to show that she meant goodwill and to make her proposal for her people. Now, the elves did not offer any aid uh, for they see the iron born just as much invaders as this new enemy. However, if they do not raise any weapons to them, uh, they would not shoot arrows into their backs while they are fighting against this new enemy. When Eldred made it back, they overlaid what the war plans would be coming, the strategies, um, and what possibilities there could be in the coming battles. They're going to split up into various groups heading down to the Floodland Lands, with some still remaining at the capital to safeguard it. And their final decision was that since Eldred seemed to become a person of interest with her very close brushes to death and the dead seeming almost attracted to her, they figured she might be able, they might be able to use her as bait um, so that they may get at the leader of the Crimson Tide um, before any serious move on their end can be done. So Eldred was part of one small company um, that was going to the reaches of the Flood and Lands, where everyone was going to rendezvous before they start marching as a full force. Some powerful undead came upon the group, and Eldred had decided that she would split off, keeping a bit of distance. That way, they don't have to keep trying to defend against these creatures if their only drive was focused on her. And from the last session, she had been trailing along the tree line until she realized she had passed a mark by the firstborn race called Baru, which are kind of a werewolf almost type race. Um, and she encountered a wandering pack that wanted to make sure she understood the boundaries and territories that they maintain. Um, she did, through battle, convince them um, that they shared a common enemy as they also felt the pressures of these undead forces from this um, Crimson Tide 
and they said if they could if Eldred or people could take the head of that leader that they'd consider matters settled and they won't harm anyone at the border as long as they do not cross it. And I believe that was the last thing Eldred did. So she turned back to her original traveling group, knowing that word has to get out of the change in Veru's borderlines. And knowing very much who's walking back to a very potential tense reunion as she left with no word or why. And it could have very much been seen as desertion, um, though she did leave. No, she did leave a note mentioning that she was just going to keep paces ahead in case there is any targeting happening. Um, so with daylight still with her, she does make it back to the group. Uh, the captain uh, ends up being one of the first ones to notice her, though a couple of the watching people and scouts do point her out, and they begin marching up to her. They say, What were you even thinking you were doing, lass? Going off on your own. You are the bait that we need. And if anything happens to you before we even get to the real battle, then we might as well just march back now. And Eldred kind of not even letting the words register in. She mentally waves them off and just says, as I mentioned in my note, just wanted to keep some paces ahead so the entire group isn't targeted on my part. I was staying close enough so I could turn back if need be. I just wanted to report that the Veru bounds have changed since our last map uh, was written out. And the captain was still sort of in their ramble and chiding. They pause. I was like, what, what do you mean the Veyron changed their, their boundaries? Our scouts charted the territory not even all that long ago. And Eldra nods, uh, says, Well, considering I saw some marks, their typical territory ruins, and I got into a tussle with a group of them, I'm pretty sure their boundaries changed. Let's see. So Eldred is part of the group technically. She still has to, I guess, give a bit of compelling notion. So yeah, let, let's roll. First roll coming back. Um, we'll be with Heart since it is just trying to convince. Um, and because she does know this group, we'll add a plus one. Well, we have a lot of momentum, so I am going to burn my momentum to turn that miss with a double, which would have been very bad, to a strong hit with a match. So we do get one momentum back. And the captain nods. Um, considering her information and her earnestness about the change with the Veru. And he kind of brings her more into the encampment proper. Um, as everyone is beginning to pack up their arrangements 
hand out what food rations they have. Uh, some of the scouts do approach, giving their own information. Let's see if there's anything. about the area they might be able to tell that Eldred doesn't know about. A weak hit. So th the scouts haven't discovered much more. One of them does confirm what Eldred has experienced. And we're running off with that match, because matches are very good. They do warn that they've seen some movement off in the marshes as they're getting pretty close to their meeting point. Um, and some of the local hunters who have been moving further and further north um, mentioning of seeing moving undead in the waters. So we'll take that as it is. Well... The rest of the company packs up and starts making their move to our next milestone. And it's not too far. But given the change of boundaries as they were trying to use the southern tips of the Tangled Wilds to cover up um, their movements, Eldred having gotten close enough is going to make a undertake a journey roll. She does have some information on it, so we'll give her a plus one. A weak hit. All right. Supply. Oh yeah, she lost her bow again. <laughs> um, the accompaniment does start making their way. It does take some time trying to be careful to cover up their tracks uh, to watch for the boundary markings. And of course, if signs of any other dangers or creatures that could be present the wind is cold and howling. The sky is grayed with a light cover of cloud as a very faint drizzle of wet snow rain. It chills. And with it, the company tries to keep their energies up. Rations are given once more. Eldred utilizes her own, which reduction in supply. But they do make it to their next waypoint. It's progress. Which was to be into the Tangled Wilds, just maneuvering past the border, which they do find between Elder and the other scouts, that border edge where it cuts off from the southern tips of the woods. And they kind of enter within that tree line, keeping an eye on the open fields, as well as an eye to the forest. Trees creak and moan and rock in the wind. Snow slowly drifting and wisping about. 
Eventually the darkness does begin to fall. And now they need to find the best spot to camp. Everyone that's able to look is looking. And Eldred does actually help in finding a good place to make camp. Everyone is able to put up their little tents and rolls in an area that almost makes them disappear within the underbrush of the tree line. And they feel very confident and safe. The fire's just barely able to be seen and the smoke just a thin trail that's pretty hidden within the dark. You don't need to get any health amongst anyone, but those that may have been still hurting from the Bone Horde battle take their time to continue looking after their wounds to have any spirit suffering. Um, so we will just take a momentum And then, as part of her fletching talent, we'll just try and recover some supplies. Because there's no thing for supply there, only minus. Good rolls tonight. Strong hit with a match. So. Eldred does end up joining the hunting party and they supply her with a new bow. At this point, the bows of the Ironborn are a little clunkier than the elven bow she gotten used to. But we'll have to do as decent as she is with a blade. She is much stronger with an arrow. But they do hunt for a little bit. They manage to get rabbit and a deer enough to feed everyone decently. Elder also scavenges for uh, tree branches and other wood supplies. Uh, so she's able to recover arrows that she's able to use in fletch in preparation. So now she does have an advantage with an arrow. I guess not yet. That's supposed to be secure an advantage. So let's see how well she can craft it. Uh, I guess it's with wits. <laughs> that kind of balances with uh, that. We're getting a lot of matches. That's weird. Um, but yeah, she does find all the branches that she would use. However, let's see what the Oracle says about how bad things got. Where is my oracle? I updated my foundry recently, so everything kind of changed here. Pay the price. Pay the price. 77. It wastes resources. So after getting all the supplies, After getting all the supplies, the food makes it back. But as Eldra is trying to grab the dry twigs and sticks and wood, that would be very beneficial. Um, she brings it back. And before she's able to properly sit down with it and start carving out her fletchings, someone had come around picking up the wood and throwing it all into the fires. 
So Eldred does not have her full supply. Delightful. And she is quite peeved, but she does not know who took her wood. Well, now. The group sleeps through the night. And let's see. All right. Yeah, there's no danger that seems to come for them at the moment. So the group gets up in the very early break of dawn, putting out their small fires, eating up what's left of the meats and stews that they threw together from the hunt before, and begin to make their way out. Eldred continues to sort of separate herself, not keeping to the center of the group, but towards the back, keeping an eye out for potential threats that may come. More so through feeling than her sight. There's a thick fog that blankets the fields as they get ever so closer to the floods and lands. See what comes up in their next leg of journey. So let's undertake journey again, because that's fun. A weak hit. So we are making progress, though still very slow between the coming in of the fog um, and just still the wetness from all the melting snow, as there's still a good layer of snow across everything. That has slowed the company down. And more supplies are lost along the way. Um, at some point in the midday, they do try and see if they can get anything more. They do manage as a group to craft new arrows, to uh, more meat, some food, some berries that they're able to munch along the way to keep their energies up and to fight back the cold. Um, however, it is a slog. The momentum is just lost a little bit as they try their best. And Eldred very much becoming wary of all the things. And soon they do break away as the last of the Tangled Wilds meets them. And the group finds themselves in... Or upon the edge of the flooded lands. So, closing in on that tip, the earth underneath their feet is getting thick and soft, and they feel 
their bodies sink down and becomes burdensome to try and pull their feet up with every step. The group keeps to what tree line they can to utilize the strength of the roots that give to the earth. But eventually they do need to try and find the camping point, the meeting point of their group. So let's see. Into the flooded lands on our roll here. A weak hit. I think when you are making progress on progress, it's either pass or fail, I think. All right. So. The group moves on and it takes well into the night uh, to even find where the meeting point is. And as they get closer, some scouts that were out from um, other groups come across them and manage to start directing them in the correct way to go. And as they come in, they get greeted by other groups who had already found the place uh, from their other ways of trek. And they do see there is a hospice sort of camp tent set up where some folks are in being bandaged and looked after through conversations of other people that Eldred can just barely pick up. They hear that other groups got hassled by the Veru trying to make it through the Tangled Wilds and had to be redirected. Um, they thought for a moment that they would end up getting into a fight with them um, as they were standing their ground and keeping those groups from moving forward, but a they at some point had changed their mind without telling them why and just let them progress as long as they got out of the woods as quickly as possible from their territory. Well, Eldred looks around the camp hoping that maybe one of the groups had her father in them as they were kept separate during this trek. But no signs of them seem to be there. Many of the people of Red Rock, the capital, are, but no signs of her father yet. There isn't much time to put up a good tent as it is very late and Eldred is very tired. So she just kind of picks out a spot, puts up a couple of the sticks and pythons and minimally crafts a shoddy setup of it, throws it down her blanket and attempts to get some sleep. Good morning. It is raining and it feels so damp and cold. There is some noise of uh, people shouting near one of the store 
one of the stores they had set up. As Eldred gets up and goes to look, she catches a very large rat. Probably the size of like a cat. Maybe even bigger. Skittering off. And as uh, she takes notice, someone shouts out, um, take the rats have come and take them out before they go back to their to their packs or more will keep coming. And as Eldred kind of takes in the shouts of the notice, the marsh rat that's started to run by her ends up actually trying to run towards her. It's a little beady eyes locking on to her. She has heard that marsh rats are a creature that love food and will just eat anything. Will even make prey out of living creatures if they so much come across them. And this very big rat as it's coming more are starting to peer up from other tents and behind other things trying to skitter about but now we're going to fight some marsh rats <laughs> as Eldred pulls out her bow and goes to launch into it um so we are going to enter the fray this is just a troublesome tracker. Rolling with heart. A weak hit. Uh, we are... We're going to take initiative. So Eldred very quickly moves into position bow out, arrow notched, and goes to launch an arrow in the first rat that's coming out towards her. So we'll do our strike. She does have... Oh no, she didn't pass that check, so she doesn't have her fletching. Um, but she does have her mask, so she gets an addition on her edge rolls. With a strong hit and a nice 69. Um, very cleanly, with a very quiet, the arrow shoots out and pierces the first rat right through its skull, sinking it. And this giant, uh, almost mangy body crumples to the ground as the next couple of rats start coming up and clamoring for their unusually sized, sharpened teeth gnashing out. Eldred volleys off another arrow. And it does strike one and stuns it. Just getting this in there, good. So we got our damage. Whoa, this is the wrong one. Hang on. <laughs> Not a deep rat. We want a marsh rat. There it is. So because we are piercing, we do double the damage. But in her distraction, there's more and more rats that are starting to swarm up and around her um, as the rest of the company are now also bringing out their blades of weaponry and trying to beat down these creatures that are now trying to make a meal on everything from living to their supplies. <sighs> 
so. Let us roll on a likely. Yes. As Eldred gets distracted from all the shouting and the noise, she's starting to lose focus on what rats to take as they almost move in a wave as they gather up and swarm. And one comes out and snatches down on her ankle, doing... That's supposed to get out of here. Doing a harm on her. And now we get to do pay the price as well. Something of value is lost and destroyed. Well, Eldra doesn't have much. Her bows are now might as well be dime a dozen. She breaks every single one. Um, however, as she is trying to kick away the rat she doesn't notice something does get separated from her. And with that match, she feels a twinge almost echo through her body. We'll see what that means. Um, she is still in defense. Fence, no initiative, so now with rats upon her, she has to switch to her blade. Let's see if I have anything that helps. Battle scarred. Nope, that's for death. Nope. She's not with kindred. All right. She's got nothing on here. So she does strike at the rats as they start coming up, her blade sinking down in. Um, but they do keep coming. And pay a price again. Action has an unintended effect. So she pulls out a blade and cuts down one of the rats. But in doing so, the long stroke, she hears the hilt of it hit something. As in the morning dark, she can just see the ever slight glint of something black. As she looks at the sword in her hands, it is just a standard sword. It isn't the sword that was given to her in a vow with the death. That blackened blade. And it is quickly sinking into the mud and becoming a loss to her. I'll say with that, she may need to endure stress. The rats themselves isn't causing her much shock or despair, but realizing something very important got pulled off her person. It isn't a good feeling. All right. Going to embrace that darkness. As she takes in the despair, refocuses, and makes her steps towards where the blade is as she continues to start trying to bring down these rats now. Let's see. Alright, progress on the rat is weak. 
However, progress is made as she, along with others in the camps, start slashing down and the rats do bite out and not out. Um, but very quickly, they're able to take down the remaining of these marsh rats. And again, they size anywhere from a very large cat to maybe a medium sized dog. They are range in scale and mass with long, almost snake like tails. But they take care of all of them. And a small group of the Ironborn gather up the bodies and make the move to take them away from the camp as far as they can to dump them. They're not anything you really want to eat. Um, but they did do some damage to supplies. And now Eldred's going to try and find her sword from death before anything more happens. Um, let's see, what would be a good roll for this? I don't know if there is a rule for this. I guess maybe just an oracle likely thing. This doesn't just let me click on what's. Alright. I know how to roll it. You do two d6s versus two d10. So we got a seven. Versus a 7 and a 10. So it takes her a moment to trace out where that blade from death went. And she starts to feel that dread pile into her. I will say it takes away his spirit unexpectedly. The separation is how, in effect, she did not think would be possible. But it will take away a spirit. It's not something that happens too often. And through the mud as she's hearing the yells of people trying to gather things up, even people yelling at her to just keep moving, get up from the mud, she does grab into it and feels out where a blade is, pulls it and finds that it is a black blade um, that she had been carrying. Very important thing to keep on her. She tries to shake off the mud and move out of sight. Clean it off. Before she rejoins to help in the supplies as they all wait for the remaining groups to join. Well. With that, as the day goes on, the fog still thick in the air, those who are able to are told to go out and scout and keep to groups of two to three. Aldred does... Uh, does try to offer to go, but given the situation and that she's bait, they do not want her to head out um, in case she gets cornered or if the enemy spots her. So she remains and almost mindlessly does whatever tasks they throw at her. And bit by bit and through hour by hour, other rendezvous groups do come in 
And as each one does, she does perk up to see if she can see her father. But he has not come yet. Fargrim. The leadership of Rock's Red Rock is present in the camp. And he reminds everyone that they are sticking with the plans. And by the morrow, if other groups have not joined them, they will be considered lost or left behind as we must keep moving in hopes to maintain any advantage that we may have. Not the best feeling in the world for Eldred, but what can be done? <sighs> so a night comes once more. Some of the scouts mention movements of what they think maybe enemy scouts and they feel pretty confident they weren't spotted but they have seen movements across the marshes and that they would need to move before they get spotted so everyone gets told that before the break of dawn they need to be packed and ready to move Dawn does come. Another group does come to rendezvous. But still no Uthgar. Still no father. But the new group does have one man that Eldred does know and is familiar with. Grizz, the father of her good friend, Kjarval who, to her knowledge, and at least her hope, is that he is just lost somewhere in the northern mountains. And that maybe he is still alive and trying to come down to the havens. But Grizz does spot her as they come in and he goes up to her and gives her his big Early hug, the stout man, just all bushy hair and barrel of a chest. Almost looking dwarfish in his presentation and just physique. But he gives her a good hug and she informs him of the plans to leave. And she nods like a uh, that's unfortunate. Hoped to have a second to have a good drink. Feels like we've been traveling on no sleep and stilted legs. Eldred does appreciate Grizz's attempts at keeping a light-hearted mood, but they both know. How serious not being found can be. But there's no moment to really linger on the possibilities or make any potential plans to go out and find Unthgar. As the vows have already been set and they must continue onward with their plans. So what a company has come together maybe several dozen people now. They gather up their supplies, dress up their cloaks to look more like the marshiness um, environment that they now are about to wander into. In the split formation, they start moving 
into the flooded lands, trying to find the paths that keep them above the waters, taking breaks to make sure their feet can get dry. As they go, the fog is still ever so thick. And I'm going to do a gather information roll. I'll just kind of just in her thoughts, but she's starting to be wary of everything and take note. All right. She realizes there is no song birds being heard here, no sound of animals or creature. Sometimes the snapping of twigs in the distance that echo out. But there is no other sound. She turns to a couple of folk that are nearest to her and she mentions this. And they give her initially puzzled and then very quickly concerned look as they pass it along the line. Up ahead, they do see a couple of People start to form up closer, shields ready, and just whispers back through the lines to keep eyes out. Two momentum from that. And as they move, Aldred being wary, keeping Bo ready. She begins watching the people in front of her. But the fog is making it hard to see everyone. She looks behind, keeping an eye. She hears no splashing, maybe just the faintest squunching of mud with their footsteps as they all sink fairly low. But it, it's a weird sensation. And as she looks around and keeps looking back across people, She's starting to realize that the numbers are... She's not... People seem to be missing. She then focuses on someone in front of her and sees their head turn to the water as they slow down a bit. And... She watches where they are looking and looks to the spot in the water. As she begins to follow, Grizz kind of shuffles her off to the side, says, I girl, keep your eyes from the waters. As she watches someone quickly pull that person up as they start to sink forward trying to shake them but as quietly as they can Eldred looks to Grizz and he's like what are you talking about? What's, what's in the waters? It says many of our folk fall in here and many of our folk feel their souls still in battle here. And many 
have drowned here. There are ones called the Sodden. They do not find rest and will lure others into the waters. Be careful. And as they keep moving, they do see the person that initially was looking to the water is now trying desperately to reach for it as their companion is trying to hold them back and shake them into reality. And Eldred readies her bow. As looking into the waters with Grizz gruff voice whispering don't let them compel you stay focused don't give in to any urge that may come to you and from the water she sees this molted flesh very slowly raising its hands out almost like a welcoming hug from the waters and as she glances towards the face at the angle she is you just sees this pale face with these milky white eyes and even in the fog the hands have jagged claws The person trying to hold on to the friend begins shouting out, It's a Sodden! We have Sodden here! And as he's trying desperately to hold on, the Sodden instinctually from the shout leaps out from the waters in a gasping, gargling moan and digs its claws into embracing this person and the friend, through shock, lets them go, and the person gets dragged almost instantly into the marshy waters. Everyone goes silent amongst the group. Shields up, spearmen with spears down and ready, all other assortment of weapons can hear the clinging of them being pulled from their sheaves or belts. Everyone begins grouping up, shouts of remembering to not look at them in the eyes, to not let them embrace the waters. One of the nearby companions, a younger man, begins muttering, he's like, oh, I heard maybe, maybe a ritual might be able to keep them away. Why don't we, don't we have a shaman amongst the group? Can we do anything? Eldred puts away her bow and begins to kind of half sword the blackened blade keeping gr close to Grizz as he has shield up and giant maul out and Grizz replies don't be foolish lad if the shamans knew how to keep these things at bay they would have taught all those that wander through here And as everyone stays quiet, trying to keep moving forward, 
Aldred watches the surface of the water for any pale coloration that may come up. And as they begin to walk past where that one companion was pulled into the depths, there is no sign of the body, just kind of the movement of where his feet got dragged. Orders from up the chain keep telling everyone to quiet down. We're in a very dangerous position. And given our enemy's skills, these Sodom could very well be within their employ under their darkened magics. With the drizzle of rain. Spirits get tested. So let's endure a stress. Let's see if Eldred can. And she can. At this point, dark magics and undead things. It's sad to say, but Eldred is getting used to it, and having met the very avatar of death. What's another spirit or ghoul against that? But she's keeping a close eye on the waters. If it's just one sodden, then maybe they might have a chance to at least keep it. Well, if maybe not able to make it, put it to rest. At least silence it for a time. She's going to try. I suppose follow. Or no, search. Keep a search on the area with wits. Okay. Another momentum. So she's watching the movements, catching the slightest shift of grass, any gasps within the crowd. Of anyone saying or being told not to look, not to look. She reaches or pulls the blade to the side and just taps the surface of the water, almost trying to create a lure. And as she moves, she takes a glance back and sees, before she looks back away, the faint white face just beneath the surface of the water. And then she hears more people starting to react. That maybe there isn't just one sod in here. There are shouts at the back of the line. And as folk begin to turn and react, there's another shout and a splash of water from the side up front 
Aldred very quickly takes a defensive stance as she looks to the waters and she does see a pale face looking up arms just kind of adrift along their sides palms up eyes milky white and the molted wrinkling flesh of this being mouth just ever so slightly open and they almost seem peaceful as they stare there But in that moment, as Eldred recognizes this creature, the spirit, and now everybody's starting to be hassled by possibly even more sudden soddens, she He's going to face danger. He's going to do something tricky. He's going to be as quick as she can. And as precise as she can with her death's blade. Since we're being quick, we can roll with edge. Yes. So she swiftly, barely even thinking about it, not letting whatever impression the spear is trying to lay into her. Eldred moves quickly, shuffling people around her off to the side as she goes in and stabs into the water so we have taken the initiative going for a strike miss with a match hold on that's eight versus eight and eight that should be equal Hang on. I have a thing. I forgot my plus. I forgot my plus. Let's see. I will use... I will use my sword master to burn my momentum. To improve my result, because that would bring me to 10, which should... I don't know why it's not letting me burn it, because it should be able to. So I'll burn my momentum to max out my result. Now I am a strong hit with a match. Let me get the sword in, in our progress chat or faux thingy here. As Eldred had, sinks her blade in and initially and does a strike, a swift long upstroke, striking the spirit. And as his body kind of comes up from the water, hear the gurgling gasps of it. And blades do two damage. Um, and yeah, but now the Swordmaster ability is burned. And Aldred continues to try and keep strikes moving until Sodden either backs off. And as she does make her move and 
Strike up this foe, sorry, this should be, since I went strong hit after, should be stronger. Um, she hears others around her now sending their spears into the water to try and scare off the other sodden or whatever manner of spirit they are dealing with. Aldred, in the moment, just gives a quick slice on her thumb, and with the blood marks red across her brow and down her nose. Enacting the ritual of the visage that she learned in Red Rock. So that will be something we can use if we need it on secure advantage. Um, but we still no, we lost initiative. So the Sodom that she is fighting is going to try and strike out at her. And Eldred manages to fend it off, but it is a difficult move. As she... As she sends her blade across at the Sodden's chest, she does feel a hand clasp onto her arm and start to pull her, and she gets pulled off the muddied path, and she feels her body just sink into the waters. And once she is within the marsh, darkness immediately hits her eyes and all she can see before her is a soft paleness, just barely visible in the water of this ironborn woman, this undead spirit that once had a peaceful face at the surface is now in a blood-curling type scream. Let's see, I will say she's trying to endure in stress because we're now underwater and got pulled in by a spirit. Eldred maintains her focus, but we do not have initiative, so the spirit with its arm is now trying to sink it in and continue to pull her down. All right. Aldred twists the blade and catches it in the torso of this spirit and it loosens its grip and she can feel just from within the water how cold the touch is, and now it's just chilling her through. And not an unfamiliar chill either at this point for Eldred. We will take that bonus as Eldred now goes to try and strike at the Soldum underneath the water. How is that a miss? It should be... Oh, maybe it's the total. Maybe I read that wrong. No. Okay. Do I have anything to help in this situation? Oh, I forgot the reverent path. I should have had a plus one. So it is a weak hit, it should be. Okay. 
because I have the path reverent. When you make a move to investigate, oppose, or interact with a horror spirit or other undead being, add plus one. So we should have had a plus one to my moves against this. So this should be a weak hit. Still, we do not get advantage back, but we do get a strike off on it. So Eldred is now struggling in the water, her breath uh, starting to lose from her throat, the bubbles coming up. So let's try and endure stress again. See if she's panicking yet. No, she is not panicking yet. So still remaining her focus and she's trying to kick off and not letting it pull her any deeper into the waters of the marsh. It's going to do one more clash against this entity as it continues to reach out its jagged claws at her. But it just can not do it. I'll we'll get another momentum. And with a match, she, Eldred's going to find and take an opportunity to end the fight. So let's end it. Five. Oh, wait, did I? I know what I did there. Okay. So, as the face of this sudden screaming and silence in the waters comes forward, the pale face, the death blade Eldred puts up kind of at her chest and thrusts it forward, launching into the sun's face. And almost the moment it strikes into it, Eldred feels this ripple of cold burst out and the pale face dissipates within the darkness. And as she starts to push up to the surface, bubbles escaping from her. She's running out of air very quickly. She feels a hand come down onto her shoulder and pull her up. And in the rush of water and voices screaming out, Grizz, she can hear him, hear his voice and him yelling at her, but she pulls her up to her feet onto the waters and trying to keep her up as everyone's moving forward, moving forward. And they all continue trying to press on to get out of whatever remaining Sodom. She did seeing some people also getting pulled out of the waters. Other people missing that were beside her before. But now they all try and rush around the tiny, muddied path. People slipping. <coughs> As they rush hard to continue to move forward. They can hear the yells of Fargrim trying to drive them. But with every person that gets pulled into the depths is yet another sodden to be made. Everyone's trying to hang on. Those who are able to crafting bindings from their ropes to try and tie each other up to keep them close and kind of in a chain together and you try and move from the sh sides almost into a single line everyone gets told to keep faces forward don't go into the waters. And 
And I didn't get to roll on this, so I will, because we invoked the ritual. So, now with the visage, Eldred gets a one to her own momentum and a plus two the next time she needs to secure an advantage or compel using fear or intimidation. All right. Some danger to that one if we fail on that next roll, but... There is now just this long line of soldiers marching, hoping that their yells and their struggles against the Sodon in the marshes haven't attracted any tension from their enemies. But at this moment, up north once again, to the settlement of Red Rock. Just off over a hill, a man on a horse is riding hard and following him a small winged creature keeping pace as they rush to the capital city the main settlement of the Havens. Jarvel has been traveling hard for days, weeks, since coming out of the depths of the mountains. And with his new Waverin companion, he knows he doesn't have much time. Spring has already started to set in, and that's only the final signal as the battles are soon to be happening and he needs to get back to Eldred. And that's where we're going to leave it, I guess. <laughs> back to the little short sessions of the one or solo uh, adventures here. I would do longer. I would, I even made a BRB screen so we could take a break, but I have a lot of things to do. So let me flip back to screen here. Um, so yeah, that is today's session a nice little, little marsh adventure. Some undead showing up, some mean rats showing up, nearly losing the blade that Eldred was given by death to fulfill a vow when her current journey is done. Um, so yeah, <laughs> been a while. I've done other games, but it's been so long since I've done Iron Sworn. Um, oh, and my throat's all scratchy. I wasn't drinking enough. Definitely not. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Hope you had a chill time with me telling my weird little story with this system. Uh, once again, if you're interested in the game, it's called. Iron Sworn RPG, if you just use Iron Sworn RPG, um, dot com, it should take you straight to the website. Bunch of free materials from the core game to some Dell stuff. I think he's also opened up uh, Starforge things as well. So take a look. Um, and of course, if you liked anything, if you like me and whatever, um, again, my name here with uh, what is my Twitter handle, Ghost Candle, though, who knows how long that's going to be a thing. Uh, so encourage you to, if you don't follow me there, at least find me in other places. Of course, follow or subscribe here. I'm affiliate. If you subscribe, I get teeny, teeny, tiny bits a month. Teeny, tiny, bitsy, bitsies, which help me massively. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. I've got a lot of work in prep tomorrow. I'm doing a session zero for a game that's going to be live streamed. And it's going to be great. I do a lot better when there's a group because I have more to play off of. It's very hard for me to think when it's just me because then I go and brain. And I'm just like, I am thinking in here, but I need to say words here. But I'm thinking of everything in here because my brain processes in a weird way. 
That's me. <laughs> um, so we'll see you next time. No art tomorrow. Actually, I probably won't be doing art this week because I didn't do it yesterday because of life things. Art is always up in the air because of things. Um, if I can do it tomorrow evening, I might. Um, that might be the changes of afternoon. We'll do it to evening. And then if life doesn't get in the way for Friday, I will do a game. I was thinking of going back to Hollow Knight. It's a game I played through before. I actually got it at the beginning of the year and played through it. Loved it. Um, so maybe I'll try and play it on stream for a little bit. We'll see. It might either be what takes me into December or I may just switch up games. I don't know. We'll see what happens when we get there. <laughs> if we get there. Um, and yeah. So otherwise, hope you have a good day, night, evening, whatever time zone you are in. Remember to hydrate. Remember to sleep. Get good sleep. Um, and enjoy the rest of your week as it is Wednesday still for me. But enjoy the rest of the week as well as your weekend if I do not stream again before then. Um, and we'll see you next time. And again, I'm a variety streamer, so remember uh, if you're watching here on Twitch at Ghostly Candle, catch me streaming a variety of things if you haven't caught it yet. I do Pokemon Nuzlocks, I do art, I play tabletop RPGs, I do all the things. So, yeah. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.